Hello and welcome back! As you can tell, it's been a very long time since I last published a detailed video on my 722.6 TCU's progress. I've been super busy working on this project and just haven't found the time yet to make a video detailing everything that's happened and changed. So without further ado, let's take a look at everything that's been going on over the past 8 months and how the development of TCU is currently progressing. Up until my last video was released, I was exclusively testing my TCU in my C200 CDI. This is great and all, but it meant I could not test alternate vehicle configurations and also cars with different wear levels of various gearboxes. So to solve this, I opened a beta tester group for people to apply and test my TCU in their own cars. This group has since been a wealth of information and test data and it's really helped me improve the TCU. With the help of the group, I was even able to redesign the board from this to this. This new board is far more stable than the old design and more importantly it expands support for older vehicles that came with the analog gear selector and EGS51 ECUs. This can mainly be found on the W210 and older vehicles. More about this later. One main fix for this new board is that it's far more durable than the old board as a massive complaint of the old board is that the capacitors kept falling off. Now, since I was assembling a lot more boards to send to various testers, it would have been very inefficient for me to test each board in my own car. I mean, what happens if I plug the bad board into my car, would I end up killing it? So to test everything on each board quickly and easily, I came up with this ingenious solution. Okay, so very quick admission, it's been about two months since I shot that assembly video and as you can see some of my setup here has changed a little bit. I don't have the cluster anymore up there because that died, um, it basically just boot looped. I'll put a video up here showing what it was doing. Um, but basically this is my testing setup now, so I've got my TCU over here, these are the newer blackboards that I'm sending out to all the testers and hopefully will be ready for production soon. But coming out of that is this special harness that I've got with all these banana leads, um, which goes to TR TRRSS module, the shift, the analog shifter from EGS51, so I can test all that. I've got all my wires labeled here. And then over here I've got the solenoids and the conductor plate, and again I've got banana lead plugs here, which let me again plug these into the oscilloscope. And I've got my EZS module here, which basically just lets me power up the car, make sure that the car the TCU can talk to that correctly. And then lastly, I've got my socket can module over here, which lets me wire tap the whole CAN bus of the simulated car and uh, make sure everything's working. But I can test using my config app all of the inputs and outputs of the conductor plate, make sure the TCU is happy, make sure the TCU can read all the inputs and outputs from the TRSS module, including stuff like the brake switch and stuff, which I've got wired to like just cables that I just short together to simulate like the button presses and stuff in the car for the brake pedal and accelerator. But yeah, just wanted to quickly show my test setup here. As you can see from all of this, the test setup I've constructed now lets me test all the manufactured TCUs in the confines of my assembly space, and test all the features of the board easily. Now let's move on to the software side of this module and see what's been going on there. At this point, the TCU is seriously coming along, but the usability and accessibility of all my TCU's features and options were not great. For example, one main feedback I got from a test group of my TCU is that not everyone there is a programmer. 
and is familiar with the necessary build tools and compile process to flash their TC with the latest firmware that I was making changes to. So over the past 6 months, I've been working on a configuration application for the TCU. Now I should note, this is still in very early beta software, so the user interface does look clunky as it's unfinished. It is written in Rust and uses my ECU diagnostics crate for Rust that I've been working on for about a year now. Here are some of the main highlights of the configuration app in its current form. The software updater. Here you can flash the TCU with pre-compiled firmware binary files that are easily downloadable from GitHub. A configuration editor for editing your core characteristics of the vehicle and TCU. A live data viewer for viewing important data about the TCU and shift process. A diagnostic routine executed to check the health of the gearbox and components. A map editor for tweaking shift maps and resetting the TCU's self-adaptation data. A shift history viewer which lets you view how the car changed gears in the past. This tool is especially useful for showing if the gearbox was flaring or hard shifting due to gear changes. My testers in the group would often show me screenshots from this page which let me diagnose and adjust pressures in the box to fix it. Now, for the rest of the video to make sense, I'll need to explain how the 722.6 gearbox actually changes gears. The transmission has two pressure regulation solenoids in the valve body, shift pressure regulator and modulating pressure regulator, and three shift solenoids. The way the hydraulic valve body is laid out in the gearbox means that the shift solenoids activates one of the three shift groups. Each shift group consists of two clutch sets and four hydraulic valves. Let's look at an example. Here we see the Y3 shift solenoid, the modulating pressure solenoid, and the shift pressure solenoid. The Y3 shift valve can only control the B1 and K1 clutch sets. This allows the transitions between gears 1 and 2, or 4 and 5. The same hydraulic circuit is found for changing other gears on the gearbox. This is what the 2-3 shift circuit looks like and the 3-4 shift circuit. Let's assume here that this is the 1-2, 4-5 shift group we are looking at, and the car is in first gear, and the gearbox needs to transition to second gear. To start the transition into second gear, the SPC solenoid first opens to begin bleeding of pressure from its pressure rails. This allows for a slightly smoother shift. Then the shift solenoid opens up to command the shift. At this point, the SPC solenoid increases pressure slightly. This begins to fill the clutch drum of the K1 with fluid and bring the K1 clutches to a near applied state where there is zero gap between the clutches, but the clutches are not actually applied. The fill time and pressure are calculated by the TCU to compensate for worn out clutches that might be thinner than new ones for example, or worn out hydraulic components. Next, the overlap phase. In this part of the gear shift, the MPC solenoid relaxes pressure whilst the SPC solenoid increases pressure. This creates a controlled release and application of pressure, thus a smooth transition between two clutches. The overlap valve here is responsible for controlling the disengagement of the B1 clutch group. This is the main reason for common flaring on this gearbox. When the overlap valve has score marks on it, it allows MPC pressure to leak out of this valve which causes the old clutch group to be released too quickly before the new clutch groups are fully applied. This creates a temporary neutral state in the gearbox where no clutches are applied, thus creating a flare. The SPC solenoid on the other hand is only responsible for applying the new clutches. Next, the SPC solenoid commands maximum pressure in order to lock the new clutches into place, then the shift solenoid deactivates. By doing so, the command valve now switches control of the new clutches to the main pressure rail of the gearbox. As you can see, the shift mechanism on this gearbox is not as simple as switching some solenoids on and off. This also explains why the 722-6 gearbox cannot jump gears. It has to cycle between each clutch group sequentially, as there is no direct link between any solenoid and a clutch pack. So to recap, we can break the shift process down to the following stages. 1. Bleed phase. 2. Fill phase. 3 overlap phase, and 4 max pressure phase. In addition to this, the TCU has to be able to learn how worn the clutches are in the gearbox in order to compensate for mechanical wear and tear to achieve a smooth clean shift. So let's look at how this has been accomplished on the TCU firmware side. At the time of writing this video, it's been exactly one year since I started writing the firmware for the TCU. To begin with, I mentioned at the start of this video that the TCU now supports the older W210 chassis vehicles that came with the EGS51 ECU and the analog shifter module. 
This is thanks to this extra circuitry on the PCB that deals with the analog shifter inputs and outputs from the shifter, accelerator pedal, kick down button, reverse park solenoid, profile selector switch, starter lockout relay and pedal switch. Unlike cars that came with EGS-52 or EGS-53, we had to completely reverse engineer this generation of vehicles CAN network, albeit we had a starting block to go off with the EGS-52 CAN network, but it turned out that a lot of the CAN frames sent from this engine ECU on these cars were totally different on this generation of vehicles. We tested this by asking one of my testers, Lexi, to use their W210 E300 with an OM606 engine as a tester, and I wrote a custom firmware for the TCU that does CAN logging. We then used my TCU as a CAN logger and with the help of video footage with the car in the air and with CAN logs I was able to figure out a lot of the data from the engine ECU. This was done by using a Python script I wrote to scrape all the CAN frames in the log file and test different bit offsets and bit lengths for various signals in the CAN data. Here, for instance, you see its attempt to find the engine torque figures sent by the engine ECU over CAN bus. After testing different bit ranges, we eventually found the torque figures are sent over CAN bus in 8 byte numbers multiplied by 4. After figuring this out, I built a custom communication layer for the EGS-51 cars, and as a result, Lexi's E300 has since racked up over 1,200 miles on my TCU, with a differential ratio that's actually impossible to obtain on a stock E300. Next, we had to work on better shift pressure control. In my previous video, the shift code would start both the MPC and SPC solenoids at a high duty cycle, and slowly decrease the duty cycle until the shift completed. As already stated earlier, this is far from optimal as the 722.6's shift process is far more complicated than that. So we end up making a lot of changes to the TCU firmware when it came to shift management. This is because the pressure in the gearbox is derived from solenoid current, not duty cycle, and there are many different pressure stages required to change gears smoothly. To address the first point, I managed to extract the stock pressure versus current table from an OEM EGS-52 module, and added this table to my TCU. This table was created by Mercedes from bench testing the transmission with various pressure sensors installed, so we can assume this is accurate. In order for the TCU to work in current and not PWM, I created a constant current driver class. This class takes a solenoid to control and the program can tell the driver how much current it wants the solenoid to consume. And the current driver class will try to keep the solenoid drawing the requested current by altering the PWM duty cycle of the solenoid every five milliseconds. This keeps the solenoid current constant whilst accounting for voltage fluctuations in the car's power supply, resistance changes in the wires to the solenoids due to heat, and other external factors that will influence the current drawn. The current reading is done by reading the analog voltage from each shunt resistor on the PCB. Thanks to me abusing the I2S peripheral on the ESP32 IC and some register manipulation, it's possible for the ESP32 to read all six solenoids at a frequency of 600 kHz. As this is all done by an external peripheral on the CPU, it consumes almost no CPU usage, so the CPU on the TCU can do other things whilst polling the current simultaneously in the background. What's really cool with this is that the solenoid's armature position directly influences the solenoid's current draw, so it is actually possible to create a closed feedback loop where the TCU is aware of the actual real-time pressures in the gearbox based on the solenoid's current draw compared to what the solenoid wants to consume. It's actually possible to view this real-time change in current adjustment in my configuration app. To address the completely new shift management process, I completely rewrote how the gear shifting works on the TCU. We now have four pressure phases and different working pressures based on the engine torque for both small and large 722.6 gearboxes. The TCU now also asks the engine for help during gear shifts by asking the engine to reduce power during gear shifts. This process, however, is very different to how the stock EGS-52 module does it, and as a result, with correct timings of torque requests, combined with my TCU learning filling times on the gearbox, and the new shift code, it's possible to achieve shifts like this. I'm not going to show all the code for this here as it would be way too much for one video, so feel free to check the TCU source code repository in the description if you're interested in knowing how this works. 
I'll also eventually be writing a wiki page on GitHub which explains the entirety of how the TCU firmware works. So, with the TCU shaping up, I know you are probably wondering by now, when am I releasing this to the general public? It's been over two years since I started this project, and I've put over 1100 miles on my car with this TCU, along with countless more miles racked up in total by all my testers, so surely by now it's ready, right? Well, at the time of writing this video, I've finally purchased myself an E55 AMG, and unfortunately sold my C200 CDI. The E55 AMG is needed for final testing as it better reflects the more high powered cars that will be likely running this TCU. So far the results look promising, but there's a couple of bugs and quirks with the M113K platform that I'm working to iron out. By the way, stay tuned for a proper video where I'll be formally introducing my car to you all and introducing some of the plans that I have for it. I also still need to add safety orientated features of this TCU, such as what happens when shifting from neutral to drive at high speeds, or handling things like gearbox overspeed conditions correctly and logging DTCs and engaging limp mode when necessary. However, once this is all completed, expect an announcement for a full release of a TCU to the general public. That said, however, if you still want to be part of the beta program, I will leave the application form in the description, and I'll relax the rules for who can or can't apply. Also, if you're an owner of a Jeep or Dodge with a 722.6, please apply to the test group. I really want to expand support of this TCU beyond Mercedes vehicles. The final problem I'm having to solve before the release of this TCU to the public is getting the connector for the TCU. The 722.6 TCU ships with a custom connector that is specific to this ECU and not a general AMP connector which is found on a lot of engine ECUs. Therefore, currently whenever I ship TCUs to my testers, I'm currently buying stock EGS modules from eBay and removing the connectors and putting them on my TCU. Whilst this is a good short term solution to this issue, it's clearly not sustainable. Therefore, if any of you people watching know how I can obtain this connector or make one from scratch, please let me know in the comments. This project is not meant to be a clone of the stock EGS module or a simple rewrite of the OEM TCU. It's meant to be a project with endless possibilities. I've been playing around with some fun bonus features for the TCU and here are a couple of them. So this is a quick test of this. I have not done anything. I've literally just turned the engine on. So in theory, when I press that, ESP should turn off. It does. And when I press it again, ah, it stays on. I can't turn it off again. What other fun or useful features would you like to see me add to this TCU? Let me know in the comments, I'm open to ideas. With that all said and done, it's been an amazing past 8 months working on this project. I've driven my old C200 CDI all the way to Germany and back using my custom TCU to ensure it's stable on long drives, and yes, it survived. But I've been so busy working on this project I unfortunately haven't had time to make or upload a video until now. There has been many times working on this where I have felt very burnt out due to the amount of work I've put into this, but all the positive feedback I've been getting has helped me to keep going. Thanks to everyone who's been helping me throughout this project by the way. So with that, thank you very much for watching, and as usual check the comments and description for any updates on the TCU's general availability, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!